Shalom. I'm Eddie Chumney from Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to be sharing with you regarding the current situation with the Israeli-Palestinian peace process, as well as the current developments that have happened in Syria, and from examining the current situation there, then determine the possibility for war in the Middle East in the near future involving Israel, the United States, and Syria. First, we're going to share with you regarding the current situation with the peace process. In the month of January, Israel and the Palestinians had a series of meetings in Amman, Jordan to try to find common ground so that they could begin formal, direct negotiations between them with the goal of having a signed peace agreement by the end of 2012. This goal was set by the quartet who consists of the United States, the European Union, the United Nations, and Russia in a statement that they released in September when then Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas was seeking recognition of a Palestinian state at the United Nations through the United Nations Security Council. And we're going to share with you from the Israeli perspective why the talks between Israel and the Palestinians are now stalled and then the Palestinian reaction to the stalled talks and what their planned course of action will be. So an overview of the talks that were held in Jordan during the month of January from the Israeli perspective is the following. Three weeks after the end of the talks that took place between Israel and the Palestinians in Amman under the patronage of King Abdullah of Jordan, Israeli officials revealed in full their version of why the talks have stalled. For three years, the president of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, ran away from negotiations, and in the case of the talks in Amman, he has acted no different, said a top Israeli official in a conversation with journalists in Jerusalem. According to the official, Israel responded positively to the quartet's initiative to return to the negotiations, which was announced on September the 23rd in New York. On October the 26th, a quartet envoy representing the United States, Russia, the European Union, and the United Nations arrived in Israel. Their goal was to hold a joint meeting with both Israel and Palestinian representatives. On the day of the meeting, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's envoy, Isaac Mocho arrived at the hotel and entered the meeting room only to discover that his Palestinian counterpart, Sayab Erekat, did not make it to the meeting. Instead, the Palestinians sent a junior official and member of Fatah's Central Committee, Mohammed Shateya. The Palestinian side did not agree to sit with Mocho in the same room and the envoys were resigned to hopping between different rooms in the hotel in order to hold discussions between the two sides. After a week, the quartet envoys arrived in Israel, although the Palestinians refused once more to sit in the same room as Molcho. There is an empty chair in the room, said Molcho to the envoys at the meeting. Where is Sayab Erekat? For over a month, the quartet envoys attempted to bring the Palestinians to the negotiating room. But only when King Abdullah began to apply pressure did things begin to move. The king came to Ramallah on a rare trip and pressured Mahmoud Abbas. Finally, on January the 3rd, the Jordanians were able to bring together Erekat and Molcho in Jordan's foreign ministry in Amman. A senior Israeli official said that the January 3rd meeting began in a wider forum where Jordanian, Israeli, and Palestinian officials were present, as well as representatives of all the quartet members. While speaking in front of no less than 20 people, Syed Erekat pulled out two documents. One 
on the Palestinian position regarding borders and one on the Palestinian position regarding security. From the point of view of Israel, the documents contained recycled suggestions, said the official. The Palestinians proposed a land swap of 1.9% of Judea and Samaria alone, that being the West Bank. This is a position that retreats from previous Palestinian proposals. After the meeting in the general forum, the sides moved to a smaller meeting with only Israeli, Jordanian, and Palestinian representatives alone. According to the Israeli official, the Palestinians immediately demanded a freeze on Jewish settlement building, freeing prisoners, and emphasized that from their point of view, the talks would end on January 26th, as that was the date that the quartet set for negotiations on the subject of borders and security. The Israeli delegation was surprised by the announcement. We have just begun and you are already threatening to end the talks, said Molko to Erkot. The Israeli side emphasized to the Palestinians that the talks are only in their beginning stages and that with such a short time frame, it is impossible to hold serious negotiations. At that same meeting, Molko presented a 21-point document that included all the topics Israel is interested in discussing during the talks, including borders, Jerusalem, settlements, security arrangements, Palestinian incitement, and more. And although the document included all the points, it did not include any of the Israeli positions. The meeting produced very little progress, except for the fact that the two sides agreed to decide on another two meetings that would take place during January. A few days later, another meeting took place in Amman. Molko, who had perused the Palestinian documents presented at the previous meeting, gave Eric Hat a list of 19 requests for clarification regarding the Palestinian positions, including the future of Jewish settlers in the Palestinian state and whether they will be uprooted or allowed to stay. Eric Kat told us that he prefers not to deal with the questions and as a matter of fact, we have not received answers to any of those questions until today, said the official. Another question posed to Erekat had to do with attitude toward Hamas. In a meeting that took place afterward, Erekat responded that the Palestinian state will be a strong democracy and blamed Israel for Hamas's takeover of the Gaza Strip. The Israeli official noted that among the Palestinian delegation, there were contradictory positions on several issues, including that of borders. On one hand, Erekat told us that the documents were not the Quran, and on the other hand, Muhammad Shateya told us that the Palestinians had already made their compromise when they agreed to a 1.9% land swap, which is the maximum they are willing to give. Another meeting between the two sides took place on January the 14th. The Israeli delegation brought with it the head of the Strategic Planning Division of the Israeli-Palestinian Directorate, Brigadier General Asaf Orion, in order to summarize Israel's position on security arrangements. The Palestinians refused to allow him to speak. We came to the meeting place and were delayed for an hour and a half because the Palestinians were not willing to hear the Israeli general. They said they are not willing to hear a military person speak, said the Israeli official. When both sides finally entered the room, Erekat handed Molko a letter that demanded the release of Hamas member and Speaker of the Palestinian Legislative Council Aziz Duwaik, who was arrested a few days earlier. A few hours later, the contents of the letter were leaked to the Palestinian media. The Israeli side also presented documents to the Palestinians, including one on incitement against Israel and the Palestinian media. The document contained quotes from the Mufti of Jerusalem that called for the killing of Jews. Eric Hat rejected the claims. The accusations are wrong, and in the end you will have to apologize for the slander, said Eric Hat to Molko. In the meeting that took place afterwards, the Palestinians had understood that they had a problem on their hands and suggested organizing a joint committee that would deal with the issue of incitement. Head of Israel's National Information Directorate, Yohaz Hendel, who participated in the meeting, told Erekat that, instead of organizing a committee, they themselves can take care of the issue of incitement. So next, I'm going to share with you the... Palestinian view and their plan regarding now what they intend to do 
since talks between Israel and the Palestinians are now stalled. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas will send a stern message to Israel with key demands to save the stalled peace process between the two sides, Palestinian sources said. The Palestinian leadership ratified the message, which will be sent officially within 48 hours, the sources said. A week ago, Abbas told the Arab League Ministerial Committee about the message saying that future Palestinian moves depend on the nature of the Israeli responses to the message. The first demand will be for an Israeli commitment to recognize the 67 borders as the baseline in reference for any future round of peace talks. It will emphasize that Israel's rejection to this demand means a practical ending of the two-state solution, the source said. The latter will also demand Israel stop all kinds of Jewish settlement construction in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, the part of the city that the Palestinians want as a future capital of a Palestinian state. The Palestinian leadership also wants Israel to free 139 prisoners who were arrested before Israel and the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or the PLO, signed the Interim Peace Accords in Oslo, Norway in 1993. The fourth and final demand is that Israel cancel all security measures it has taken in the West Bank when the second Palestinian uprising broke out in 2000. The sources say that the measures affected the Palestinian security and political mandate in the West Bank, turning the Palestinian National Authority's rule similar to that of a municipality. If Israel responded negatively to these demands, the first Palestinian move will be directed to the United Nations, where the Palestinians will work on upgrading their status to a non-member observer. Well, that concludes the current situation with the peace process. Next, we're going to look at the current situation with Syria. Iran, Russia, and China continue to support the Syrian government of Bashar Assad. They are doing so in the following way. Iran docked two of its warships at a Syrian port recently. Iranian TV said that the vessels, a destroyer and a supply ship, are to provide maritime training to Syria's navy under an agreement between the two countries. Last week, Bashar Assad announced a referendum leading to parliamentary elections as a way to resolve the internal Syrian crisis. China backs that proposal. China called for not only the Syrian government, but the opposition to put down their arms as a means of stopping the violence. China supports the reforms that Bashar Assad has announced. Meanwhile, a group known as the Friends of Syria, backed by Western powers in the Arab League, plan to hold a meeting in the near future. The Friends of Syria is an entity that supports the opposition group to Bashar Assad. Russia said it will not attend an international meeting on the conflict in Syria because the Syrian government will not be represented at this Friends of Syria conference. While Iran, China, and Russia is supporting Bashar Assad, the Palestinian group Hamas in the Gaza Strip has decided to sever ties with the Syrian government of Assad. Hamas mainly consists of Sunni Muslims. Meanwhile, Assad's government consists of a sect of Shiite Islam. Therefore, lines are being drawn in Syria between Sunni and Shiite Muslims. As a result of the pressure, that is mounting on Syria's Assad to resign, mainly coming from the United States, the European Union, and the Arab League, Israel fears that Assad may launch an attack against Israel to try to hold on to his power. Therefore, the situation in Syria at the moment is quite serious and intense. Well, this is going to conclude this week's update. Until we do it again, Shalom. In Yeshua the Messiah. Amen.